All right, hello and welcome to the Movie Pit Podcast. I am your host, Christian. Thank you very much for joining me on another edition of the podcast. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, my third episode, so thank you very much for uh, tuning in if this is your third time listening. Actually, the second official podcast, because the first podcast was the introduction podcast, but that's, that's you know, neither here nor there. All right, that's <laughs> not really, but whatever. You know what I meant. Let's, uh, let's start the podcast. Today I will be talking about, if you obviously read the title, the Oscar winners from this past Sunday. I know it's Tuesday, but whatever. I'm going to be talking about the Oscar winners. Uh, I'll also be reviewing my first uh, reviews on the podcast, The Witch and Eddie the Eagle. We'll be talking about that. We'll also be talking about two brief movie news items that came out today. And uh, give you a little bit of an update on a little bit of the structure of the podcast at the end of the podcast. Or how things will be... We'll talk about that. I'll talk about that later. Alright. So, let's start off with the first thing, which are the reviews. And the first review I have for you guys is The Witch. It's a, it's a horror movie that was written and directed by Robert Eggers, who will also end up uh, directing the Nosferatu uh, reboot or remake or reimagining whatever label they're putting. I think they're labeling it a reimagining of Nosferatu. So he's doing that. Uh, and this the witch also like won him awards at like film festivals, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. So uh, the witch at the very end of the movie uh, is said uh, to be based off writings and journals and folklore and fairy tales of the time. And uh, the movie itself is supposedly set 62 years before the Salem Witch Trials. So the movie's set in 1630, and it follows of a family of devoted Christians that are kicked out of the town and make their home uh, near a wooded area. Wooded area. A forest, near a forest. Uh, Ralph en- uh, Enson, I think I'm pronouncing that last name right, uh, plays the father, William. Katie Dickey plays the mother, Catherine. Uh, Harvey Scrimshaw plays the second oldest son, Caleb, which you see predominantly in the trailers. Lucas Dawson and Ellie Granger play Jonas and Mercy, the youngest children, which don't really, which play a part in the movie, but not really. And finally, uh, the lead, which is uh, the w- person that we follow mostly in the in the movie, Anya Tyler Joy, who plays uh, Thompson or Tomlinson. As was promoted in the trailers, the events of the witch start off when. Well, even the very beginning of the movie starts off with the family uh, getting cast out. But the the movie starts to pick up when the daughter, Tomlinson, is playing, you know, the an innocent game of peekaboo with her with her baby brother. However, he mysteriously um, disappears, and this is where you know the family starts to divide divide itself and break down as they think that either witches are at play. Or that, you know, since they're a very devoted Christian family, that God has forsaken them. So I mentioned earlier that the film had a lot of buzz on the film festival circuit, getting Robert Eggers, Robert Eggers a Best Director Award at one of them. I forgot which one. I forgot. I think it was either Fantastic Fest or South X by Southwest. I, I don't remember which one exactly. But he won at one of those. You know, it, it, it's made The Witch a very... Um, talked about horror film and you know it, and, and pretty much every pr- promotional ad that I've seen it's boasting the quote from Stephen King aka the master of horror himself saying that it terrified him so of course the question becomes if you got a quote like that from Stephen King who is arguably one of the best horror writers out there maybe next to his son Joe Hill is the witch that good And the answer, personally, for me, since it is my podcast and I'm reviewing it, is yes and no. A lot of things, or a lot of things work for The Witch. One of them is that it gets, it gets really creepy as hell for most of it. And the creepiness is elevated thanks to uh, the cinematographer whose name is, uh, I know I'm going to butcher, Jaren Blaschke. Again, not sure I'm saying that right. Uh, And... Combine the cinematography with Robert Eggers', Robert Eggers direction and the score done by Mark Corvin. And all those things, the cinematography, the direction, and the score, really make The Witch 
more unsettling to watch because it's it's it, it's shot in natural light for the most part they filmed in in this really they they really make the film claustrophobic the the cabin they're staying in is really tight and narrow and it feels like if you just like step one foot you know to the right you're gonna you know step you know get bump into someone or step into the next room right away and you know it's obviously in the middle of the woods so you're feeling very isolated for the most part and you combine that with the eeriness and uh, with just being surrounded by the woods and the fact that there is you know stories that there is a witch in the woods you know and the score again the score the score is the main thing that really makes the film work cuz it's so unsettling uh, and it, it that makes the the witch work for the most part you know all that stuff and it's and again it's really creepy it's 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 undoubtedly creepy you know i think one of the other quotes that was in the trailer was that if it feels like you're watching something you're not supposed to be watching and you know, I, 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 there's something about quotes on like movie posters and DVD covers, and even in trailers, that really kind of it takes me out a bit because it's like okay, but at the same time it works for other people. I'm very fifty fifty on the situation. I, I I would prefer that there be no quotes in an actual movie trailer, but and if you know in this kind of movie which opened up in film festivals and you know got a big distrib- distribution. Uh, thanks to A24, which has released this movie, it kind of helps a little bit, especially with horror movies, because horror movies, I feel like, are, horror movie fans are one of the most devoted fans out there. I I, I have a love-hate relationship with horror movie fans, because, uh, one, they're so devoted to the, to the genre, they love the genre, and, and and you can tell they love the genre. And they get really upset when, you know, there's a horror movie that is supposed to be, you know, the next big thing. And it divides fans. And I think, and, I, and that's another reason why, for me, I love film is because it divides fans, viewers, into thinking, you know, is this really good or not? And for horror fans, it, it's it's more true. Because you, you have this, um, that if you heard that, that was my cat. Um... You have this, you have It Follows, you have The Babadook. Th- those are movies that were really boasted to be like, okay, this is gonna, this is, th- these are horror movies that horror fans will love. And those movies undoubtedly split fans into, th- into saying, is this a good horror movie or is this not a good horror movie? So The Witch is definitely one of those films. I think even if you're not a horror movie fan, you just, you're a casual horror movie fan. The Witch is going to be one of those movies where you either like it or you don't for two reasons. One, it's very slow. It's a very slow build horror movie where it takes time to really get to what it what it wants to do. And I kind of like slow burn movies. If the execution and payoff is is done right and makes sense for the character or characters, or whatever, you know, whoever the, the payoff and execution's for. Th- that, that's the kind of slow burn movies that I like. And The Witch is... <laughs> I don't know what my cat's doing. Uh, the Witch is... It's it's one of those movies. It's it's one of those movies where you're either going to love the ending, or you're going to hate it. And for me, I was very split on the ending. I'm not going to ruin it, obviously. Uh, you'll never hear me ruin a, a movie on a podcast, by the way. You'll never hear me. You'll never hear it. But the ending was definitely one of those movies where... It was one of those endings where it was... I, w- I was split on it. I understood what it was trying to do, but at the same time, I was very conflicted on if that is really what would happen for the character. So th- there's that. So let's let, let's let's move on from that. Let's go back to the to the review. So um, it's a horror movie. So it, it, and thankfully, the witch doesn't rely a lot on jump scares. There are there are a couple of them. There are a few of them, and one of them really got me. But it's really more a horror of being, you know, being messed with psychologically or supernaturally, uh, and and a movie about being being isolated. There's also uh, an, an isolation kind of mentality to everything because these people, there is one point where the characters say, "Oh, we're gonna, you know, it's gonna take like a day ride to get to town," and it's like, okay, you you have to remember, you know, it's 
it's done in the old days. It's done in the days where you know it was everything was done in hor- with horses and and carriages and stuff like that. So there's this really you know there's this moment where you're kind of just watching everything and just realizing you're you are an observer. You you know that there is there's my cat again. You know that there is a witch out there, and that's not a spoiler because it's 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 in the trailers. There is a witch out there, so you you know the dangers that are going on, but you know this family is completely oblivious to 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 it because they're dealing with their own thing. It's it's kind of like this looming danger that you as the audience know is going to happen, but these characters obviously are so entranced by their own thing, and again, I won't spoil anything, but something it, it comes to them in a hard way and you see them dealing with this and you see them kind of you see them break and it's kind of one of and it's kind of that deal where it's that all this is going on with them and this this horror where it fits into the horror genre is that it either it breaks you either break or you or you push through it and for this family which is are, are devoted you know, religious people, it's it's testing their faith, and that is also one of the things that, in 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 some way, at least for me, it works because you know how devoted they are. You you see them, and you 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 want them to kind of be okay. You don't want you know it's it's. It's weird to say for a horror movie, you're like, yeah, I wish everyone get, I wish everyone dies. You know, it's it's you're you're always rooting for someone in a horror movie, whether it be the killer or not, and then that's 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 your thing. But for this, it's like they're just a family. It's just a family who you can tell stuff has been going on before the movie starts, and everything kind of just boils up to this to this horrible situation that's going on. And it's just, it goes, you know, shit hits the fan. For me, the thing that works more about The Witch is the fact that it's a slow burn. And the fact that it's really unsettling. And there is a lot of, there is one, there are a few particular moments that are really messed up. Obviously, I won't spoil them. But one particular moment sticks out for me. And it's maybe halfway through the movie, if that and it's just, it sticks, it, it stuck with me way after the movie. And just thinking about it now just brings up something, ab- uh, something ab- about it. We're watching it all over again. It's really messed up. <laughs> it's just, I, I, I don't know. I just, I just it, it's the witch, out of, out of anything, if you walk out of the witch and you don't like the movie, you will at least be saying it was a very unsettling and it was really creepy. And and finally, you know, one of the other things that that may make it or break it may make or break the witch for you is the fact that that the cast Robert Eggers, you know, the side because he also wrote it decides to go with the old the you know the old English dialect. There's a lot of come hithers when they're talking to each other, so you might have to pay close attention sometimes to the dialogue because you might miss some stuff or you know it, it's just not a natural dialect that we're used to hearing nowadays. But it makes the movie work. It makes the movie uh, very authentic, you know, for the for the time and for everything else. So uh, points for that. But you know, it might detract some people because you know they they'll have a hard time understanding. But but because of that, it also makes the movie rewatchable because you have you can go back and you can catch some nuances and stuff like that. So uh, all in all, the witch, you know, it's 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 very creepy. It's very there's some damn good creepy visuals. So again, the cinematography is great in the movie. Kudos to everyone there and, and to the movie. But um, at the end of the day, I can see why people wouldn't maybe like the movie. So, The Witch for me, uh, 3.5 out of five. It it's it's a, a very I wanted to give it a four, but you know, like good conscience, I can't give it a four. It's it's a 3.5 out of five. It's it's a good movie. It's a slow paced, which may you know hurt some people. You know, may rub people some the wrong way, but I, I I would recommend the witch to people. I would. So there's that. All right. Uh, second review is Eddie the Eagle, which I really liked. Directed by Dexter Fletcher and stars Hugh Jackman and Taron Egart. 
think I'm pronouncing that last name right, from Kingsman Secret Service. So it, it tells a story of Eddie Edwards, you know, the the notorious now British underdog ski jumper who made it to the 1988 Winter Olympics. And I know that's a spoiler, but it is history, so there's that. I won't tell, if you're not familiar with the story, I won't tell you what, what happens, but there, what happens in the movie and what happens in real life, but that's what it is. Uh, so I wasn't alive when uh, Eddie the Edwards entered the Olympics. I was, uh, I was, I wasn't even born yet. So I had no real connection to this, to the real story. I had no real connection to the character. I didn't know who Eddie Edwards was before I found out this movie was being made. But uh, for those who don't know, Eddie Edwards, and the movie takes. I found out that the movie takes out some liberties, which is you know common for Hollywood to change some things in a uh, in a true story. You know they change things for for the sake of having a good movie or for the sake of you know maybe inter intertwining other things that have happened to to real life people and just bulking it in with with this one person or just you know sometimes you know you need some drama to dramatization and uh more stuff to happen to your characters so um eddie Ed, Ed, uh the movie follows eddie edwards obviously who uh since a child has been dreaming of being in the olympics you know, he faces a lot of obstacles in the way. You know, he has uh, bad knees, he has poor eyesight, uh, and he has just a, a, a lack of natural athleticism that it takes to make it into the Olympics. Even his own father, who's played by um, Keith Allen, his name's for some reason I just blanked on it, uh, Keith Allen, who doesn't want him sticking to kind of, quote, silly dreams. So, you know, but, but Eddie is very determined, and he eventually finds a way to get into the British Olympic team, that is set to go to the Calgary Winter Olympics in 1988. All he has to do is go to Germany, train, and then qualify. And when he gets to Germany, he meets you know other ski jumpers who don't ne- necessarily give him a very well, 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 warm, sorry, welcome. And eventually, he meets Bronson Perry, played by Hugh Jackman, who is this hard drinking chain smoker with a bad attitude and. He sees Eddie as like an idiot because he knows he doesn't have what it takes to be a ski jumper. But eventually, Bronson sees potential in in Eddie, and Eddie finds out who who Bronson, you know, what what he really did, and who he really is. So the two team up and you know start training together. And what leads is you know, and then before before I get to that, but you know. Say that Eddie the Eagle, the movie, is just an underdog movie would be a really big understatement. The film can resonate with a lot of people. It's it with everyone to ev- to anyone to everyone. You know he deals with naysayers. Eddie, uh, that includes the British Olympic Association, and I don't know if it includes uh, in real life. Um, the uh, British Olympic um, Association head Dustin Target. Who in the movie is played by, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Tim uh, McNeary. I think I'm saying his name right. And he's dealing with physical obstacles and and financial obstacles. But there, there's something about the movie that it's more than an underdog movie. It's it's really more of one of those cliche movies about following your dreams and don't let anybody tell you no. And sometimes, you know, cliches are, are good. Sometimes. Not all the time. Sometimes. And that's one of the things that, you know, people will probably see Eddie the Eagle. It's filled with, you know, cliche moments. It's filled with feel-good moments. But what really makes Eddie the Eagle work, and what makes all that, for the la- for the lack of a better term, okay and great, is the performances. Especially by Taron. His, perform- his performance as Eddie Edwards is nothing short of great. He is extremely likable. He has great charisma. His chemistry with the whole cast is phenomenal, you know, and if he can stay toe-to-toe with Hugh Jackman, who has shown that he's more than, who's shown that he is a great actor as well, you know, that says something. And I I hope that Taron Egerton is, is a big name, he becomes a big name because of this movie, or any other movie he does afterwards. I'm pretty sure you'll hear more of Taron Egerton in the future. And... But yeah, his performance in this is is great. So is Hugh Jackman's. Uh, Jackman does have this weird subplot in the movie with Christopher Walken's character. Don't get excited. Christopher Walken has like three short scenes in the whole movie, and the whole subplot there is 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 it's not 
it, it felt rushed. It felt like it came like the movie would have worked without it, to be honest. Like if they had taken the Christopher Walken character out, it would have worked. It, it, it the movie the whole movie would have worked. It the subplot wasn't really needed. The resolution for the subplot was just felt again. It felt rushed. Uh, it, it kind of just it was under it was underwhelming. But you know whatever. Um, so any of the eagle to keep this review shorter than than the witch review. Uh, was great. It was a good movie. It's it's it, it's filled with you know it's very heartwarming. It's emotional. It's funny. It's it's a great motivational film uh, to be added to the mo- motivational motiv. I can't even say the word now. Motivational. I could. Can I say motivational? I think I this motivational films and Taron in it is fantastic. So any of the eagle, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was one of those films where I thought it was just going to be okay. And again, it's it is filled, you know, some cliches and some typical feel good moments. But at the same time, it's it, it still doesn't take away the performances and it doesn't take away from the final product. So I liked Eddie the Eagle. I gave it a uh, I gave it a four. Um, I'm I'm still leaning on four four point five out of five on the review on the written review I did, which again I'll I'll talk to you guys later about that. I gave it a four point five out of five, and I want to stick to that because I it's already written down. I mean, I can go back and edit it, but it's already written down. Uh, but uh, it's a good movie. I like it. I would also recommend Eddie the Eagle. It's a great film. It's funny. You'll laugh. You'll possibly tear up or cry. Uh, it, it's Go watch it. It's great. So that's the review section of the podcast. Let's get to uh, some, of the, some of the movie news that came out today. And only one real big piece of movie news came out at, at the time of um, when I'm recording this anyway. Uh, the big one is uh, the Dark Tower, the Stephen King uh, comic book series, as uh, that's been in the works for a lot of years, and has, there's been a lot of false starts. There's been a lot of rumors and casting issues, and Ron Howard, who was going to direct the movie for a long time, finally backed out, and he's just going to stick on as producer. Uh, so the Dark Tower finally confirms that it has its two male leads, Idris Elba, who's great. If you don't know who he is, shame on you. You're listening to a movie podcast, so I assume you know who Idris Elba is. Maybe. And Matthew McConaughey are confirmed for the lead roles from, I believe it's a director himself. Yes, it's a director himself. Nik- Nikolaj Ar- uh, Arcel, who directed uh, The Royal Affair. Or A Royal Affair, sorry. He confirmed that uh, Idris Elba and Matthew McConaughey are indeed going to star in the movie... Uh, I think he was speaking with um, with Stephen King on an issue on uh, issue with um, Entertainment Weekly, and he confirmed. So, for those who don't know what the Dark Dark Tower is, Dark Dark Tower is this really like weird Western comic book, and I've only read the first issue, and I read it a long time ago, and I have like six or five uh, of the comics, uh, the graphic novels here in my house somewhere, and I and it's been a while since I read them. I only read the first one. And it was great. I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it was uh, it's Stephen King through and through. Uh, I think even some of the um, some of his other characters. You know how there's this weird thing that Stephen King's characters are all uh, part of the same world, and some apparently in the later issues, some of his other characters appear in the Dark Tower. McConaughey is playing Walter Paddock in the Dark Tower, and again, I haven't read enough of the Dark Tower to know who these characters really, really are. But I'm excited for the project because I've known people who have read the Dark Tower comics and and graphic novels, and they all really enjoyed it. And they they say that you know it's really good, and that it's if it's going to be finally made into a movie, that it's going to be awesome. So I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. And with Idris Elba and Matthew McConaughey in a Stephen King property in the same movie together, it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. So. There's that. All right. Let's get to the uh, my other bit of news, which is the Oscars. I know you're tired of the Oscars. It's over. Don't worry about it. No more award shows. So uh, the Oscars were uh, this Sunday. Really fun time. It was a fun Oscars. It was the first time in, in, in a while that I actually enjoyed watching the Oscars from beginning to end. Uh, I thought Chris Rock was, was great as a host. He was a great host. His opening monologue was funny. You know, he... he tackled the Oscar so white controversy 
I thought he was, I thought, again, I thought everything he did was great. He was a good host. I liked it. I, I liked him as the host. And I think that's what made the Oscars so enjoyable this year. Uh, of course, there was, you know, some some jokes fell flat. Everyone didn't like, I think everyone didn't get the Stacey, da- the Stacey Dash appearance. Because I've heard some people saying like, oh, it was cringeworthy and it didn't, it wasn't funny and no one knew what to do with it. I think that was, I, I think some people just didn't get the joke. It was awkward because you, you kind of look at it and you're like, oh, and Stacey Dash. And you're like, okay, it's like, she's not going to show up. And then she shows up. And I think at that point, the joke didn't become funny because she was actually there and no one knew what to, to do or say. Um, so yeah, th- 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 there's that. So that, w- that was the biggest, you know, kind of, you know, what the hell's going on kind of moment. Some other kind of just random uh, slash funny moments that I liked. Uh, the Revenant bear being there, they kind of just cut away to the bear at one point. And I thought it was hilarious. I literally cracked up when, when they did that. I thought that was really, that was, I thought that was really funny. The Ryan Gosling, Russell Crowe presentation, I thought it was, I thought that was pretty funny. And they're going to be in, in a movie together, The Nice Guys. We'll talk about that when it gets close to the release date. The Black History Month fake out was that they were actually honoring Jack Black. I thought that was funny. Uh, the other kind of like mini montages to the, to the, to the best movies, Obviously, Tracy Morgan with the Danish girl. I thought that was I thought that was uh, that was pretty funny. Louis C.K. Louis C.K. I like Louis C.K. Louis C.K. is one of my favorite comedians. And when he was talking about the people winning the documentaries, that the, this was the nicest thing they would ever own in their shitty apartment, and they, it would be taken home in a Honda Civic. I thought it was just it was hilarious. Uh, let's, let's see what what uh what other stuff. Uh, I'm just looking through. Uh, Sofia Vergara when she announced. This was just more of a random moment. When she announced that Son of Saul won for best foreign picture, the way she pronounced it, I was like, no, that's not right. That's a different movie. She pronounced it Son of Saul, which obviously is the Hispanic way of saying Son of Saul or, so, or just Saul. So I was like, no, that's not, that's not. And I had my, my I was watching, oh, oh, almost lost my microphone. <laughs> uh, I was watching with my brother and my sister. We all kind of looked at each other like, why would you say it that way? But, you know, whatever. The memoriam section, I mean, that's always, you know, a big one. And there were people that were left out, obviously. Because uh, some, some deaths were just so recent or, you know, sometimes it just gets, you know, they, they only have a certain amount of time for the memoriam section, I guess, spaces, and people get left out. But uh, I liked that David Grohl was performing uh, Blackbird, and I thought that was really great. It's been 20 years since Toy Story came out. When they said that, it's been 20 years. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. It can't be 20 years. But I looked up and it was been 20 it's been 20 years since Toy Story. I can't I can't believe that. The winners crawl. This is the first year that they're doing it to of you know to make the Oscars shorter. You know, everyone's always up there with a big list. So what they asked, if you're wondering what the crawl was, they asked the the potential winners or they asked everyone to make a list of who you want to thank. And give us the list, the Academy, give us the list and we will, if you win, we will, you know, make a crawl under and all the names will show up. I just, I thought it was weird. I, I was like, this is, this is really weird, but okay. They, I guess that's a good way of saving time. No one gets to get played off, whatever. Okay. It works Two kind of on their random moments. I think everyone was really surprised when Mark, uh, what, when Mark Rylance won for best supporting actor, which I was I was happy that he won. You know, he was one of my my choices to win, but uh, I think everyone was really surprised. I think you know Sly was a very big favorite to win, especially in the last couple of days. But uh, the gets Mark Rylance. I don't know why I said his name that way. Um, Andy Circus, the 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 motion capture performance package they made when he came out to give uh, the best visual effects award, I thought was so awesome. And then at the same time, I was like, why don't you give him an award? <laughs> Andy Serkis is awesome. Uh, you know, he played Gollum. He played Caesar. He's played, um, he played, he's, he's playing, uh, Supreme Leader, Sn- uh, Snoke in the Star, the new Star Wars franchise. He was a necromancer in the Hobbit, the Hobbit series. So, you know, Andy Serkis is awesome. He's great. And he's finally directing stuff. He's going to direct a, a version of the Jungle Book. No, of Animal Farm. Sorry. Or is he doing the Jungle Book too? I think he's doing the Jungle Book too. Not the Jungle Book sequel. He's doing a Jungle Book interpretation. And he's also doing an Animal Farm interpretation, which is really cool. 
so he's finally directing stuff. But yeah, his his performance capture package was really was really great. And uh, Mad Max, how about Mad Max? Huh? Sweeping pretty much every single not all of them, but pretty much every technical category at the Oscars. That's awesome. That really is. Uh, so it, it was the biggest winner of the night with six Oscars. The Revenant was the second biggest with three Oscars, and we'll get to that in a minute. Ex Machina became the lowest winning budget. The low the yeah became the lowest budget film to win a visual effects award. Uh, Roger Deakins has yet to win an Oscar. He's thirteen for zero. Poor Roger Deakins. I feel sorry for him. I really do. I mentioned in the pod in my my prediction podcast that he he does his amazing work, and he never wins. So there's that. Uh, Ennio Marconi and Leonardo DiCaprio and their Oscars, their Oscar drought, even though Marconi actually won an Oscar in 2007. Well, it was an honorary Oscar, but still. Uh, but Leo, obviously the big one, and we'll get, uh, we'll, I'll get more into that in a second. First time Oscar winners. Oh, let me just say the Oscars because this, this is getting a little awkward. Well, not awkward, but just very scattered for me. All right, uh, so the winners. I'm just going to name all the winners really quick. Uh, sort subject uh, documentary, a, gr- a Girl on the River, The Prin- uh, the Price of Forgiveness. Uh, it won for that. Uh, the winner for documentary feature was Amy, the Amy Winehouse documentary. Uh, for language film, like I said, Son of Saul. Live action short film, Stutterer. Animated short film, Bear Story. Animated feature was Inside Out. Visual effects, like I just like I just said, Ex Machina. Original song was a Sma- the Sam Smith song, Writings on the Wall for Spectre. Original score was uh, Ennio Marconi for The Hateful Eight. Adapted screenplay was The Big Short that was written by Charles Randolph and Anna McKay. Original screenplay winner was Spotlight by Josh Sing- Joss Singer and Tom McCarthy. Emmanuel Lebesky won for Cinematography for The Revenant. Mark Rylance won for Best Supporting Actor for British Spies. Alicia Vakander won Best Supporting Actress for The Danish Girl. Brie Larson won Best Actress for Room. Leonardo DiCaprio won Best Actor for The Revenant, finally. Uh, Alejandro G. Inuritu won Best Director for The Revenant, and Spotlight won the big one for Best Picture. And like I said, Mad Max won a lot of the technical awards and won film editing, sound mixing, and sound editing, makeup and hairstyle, costume design, and production design. So there's that. Uh, so yeah, here's some uh, more uh, like stuff that I was pointing out there. Uh, despite Sam Smith's statement when he won the Oscar saying he was the first open gay man to win an Oscar, that's not true. Uh, someone else was, and I, for the life of me, forgot to put it in my notes. That's the way to go. Way to go, me. Um, uh, Chivo, Emmanuel uh, Lebeski wins uh, three straight years in the same category for cinematography. That's a new record. Uh, Inuritsu also uh, makes records by being uh, by winning back-to-back Oscars as well. Uh, and I made and I made a statement on my Twitter and my Facebook page saying that uh, Alejandro Inuritu is the only minority. It was a joke. It was a complete joke. He's the only minority the Academy will give an Oscar to back to back. Obviously, making fun of the whole controversy. It was a joke. It was it was a complete joke. It wasn't I wasn't being you know, so ser- you know insensitive to anything. But it's true. Uh, so uh, yeah. So Brie Larson. Alicia Vakander, Charles Randolph, Anna McKay, Josh Singer, Josh Singer, and Tom McCarthy uh, all won in their first nominations. They were all first-time nominees, and they all won for the first time. So kudos to them. And Spotlight is the first film to win Best Picture since 1952, the greatest show on earth, to win the top prize, Best Picture, and only leave with one other award. Typically, Best Picture uh, winners leave with three awards, which would have gone to uh, The Revenant if it, had fin- if it had won Best Picture. So, there's that. So, if you're wondering how did Spotlight win Best Picture if only won one other award, and why wasn't Mad Max, you know, why didn't Mad Max win the big awards like big, like Best Director or Best Picture when it won everything else earlier? So, here's the thing. When it comes to the Academy, they're asked to pick one winner for all the other awards. Just one. And the person with the most votes wins. For Best Picture, though, it works very differently. For Best Picture, they ask the voters to rank the films in order of preference rather than just pick one winner. And I guess Spotlight was the one that, you know, had the most, I guess you can say, upvotes. Let's put it that way. 
Uh, and I'm not taking anything away from Spotlight. Spotlight was was a good film. It was a great film. Uh, and I and I said that you know Spotlight or The Revenant were gonna walk out with Best Picture. And you know the Oscars you know sometimes do tend to give the award to a movie that is very relevant at the time. You look at The Hurt Locker; it was relevant at the time. You look at Crash, relevant at the time. Although everyone hates the fact that Crash won Best Picture, I hadn't seen Crash in a long time, and I don't remember liking it when I first saw it. So. I'll just agree with the majority on that. Although I hate doing that, but there you go. So Spotlight was a good movie. It was. I'm not taking anything away from Spotlight or the people involved or whatever. But, you know, it, it's very uncommon for Best Picture to, to win, for a movie to win Best Picture when it hasn't really won a lot of other stuff. Uh, and like I mentioned, and like I mentioned in my prediction podcast, usually, you know, Best Picture, the be- when, the movie that wins Best Picture usually wins Best Director, uh, and Best Writing, and I also believe Best Actor? That's not most of the case. Best Actor is kind of the 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 one that, you know, is can go either way, but definitely Best Director, and I believe Best Writing as well, is, the, is what determines usually Best Picture winner. Not the case this time around. But there you go. That That is, um, that's kind of the thinking of what, why Spotlight could have won. Because it's voted, the ranks are vo- the 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 voting is ranked differently from all the other awards. That's what it is. So that's the podcast for today. I didn't mention that I, I was going to give you guys a little bit of an update on what was going to be what was coming up for the podcast. So I have this this plan somewhat worked out in my head. I'm still figuring everything out. The plan right now is to maybe do two podcasts a week. One at the beginning of the week, maybe either Monday mon- Monday or Tuesday, like today, and then one on Friday, with the idea being that the Monday podcast will be, you know, uh, s- reviews and, you know, whatever else happens, I, ha- I happen to want to talk about, and Friday being uh, talking about the big news items that came out for the week, you know, like a traditional podcast, movie podcast usually does, and talking about the movies that are coming out in theaters that weekend so that's the plan that's the plan i have in my head right now but of course plans change things change if it's a slow move it's a if it's a slow news week uh maybe the friday podcast will be very short and i'll only talk about the movies that are coming out that week uh everything's still in the working stages obviously the podcast is still very young it's still in the developing stages a little bit you know so that but that's that's a that's a bit of the plan that's what i want to do are you okay with that plan let me know let, let me know if you're okay with that in the comments. Uh, so yeah, thank you. That's it. That's all I have today. That's that's all I have. That's the plan. So there'll definitely be one more podcast this week. But after that, I don't know if uh, the podcast will come regularly. The plan is to do that. The plan is to have two podcasts a week. But like I said, plans change. Things change. Stuff happens in real life. So, but that's the plan right now. I don't want to make promises because, like I, like I said, stuff happens. I don't want to be like, uh, it's going to happen. And then everyone's going to be like, where's the podcast? And then no one's going to say that because there's not a lot of people listening. But you know what I mean. But thank you guys so much for listening. If you've listened, if you've stuck all the way to the end. If you stuck all the way to the end, you're the real trooper in this. Because uh, these podcasts are coming out a little longer than I thought they'd, they'd, they'd be. But whatever. You can have it on the background when you're doing something else. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for listening to today's podcast. If you want to keep up to date with the podcast and the movie news, especially when we start, you know, when I actually start talking about the movie news that's coming out, go over to Facebook, give us a like. I'll link the Facebook page in the in the description area, or you can just go to facebook.com slash movie pits. That's uh, facebook.com slash movie pits. Obviously, movie and pits are one word. The M and the P are capitalized. Uh, you can give us a like over there. You can stay up to date with the movie news. And or you can go to my WordPress account, which uh, has written reviews. Uh, so you'll be ahead of that a little bit as well. It's uh, movies. <coughs> went through preview there. It's movie. Oh, my God. I did it again. The WordPress account is movies with Chris. Uh, if you like the Facebook page uh, every weekend, I up I you know post up the, the movie reviews up there. I link I link it to the WordPress account. 
give me a like over there, follow me over there, and uh, and yeah. So uh, that's it. That's the podcast this week, or that's the podcast for today anyway. Hopefully there will be, no, I definitely will record a podcast uh, for Friday. I definitely will. So thank you guys so much for listening. I am your host, Christian. Have a good day, guys. Have I know it's it's still the beginning of the week, but we can power through. Power through, guys. That's that's today's message. Power through. All right, guys. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys later.